Good morning to you wherever you join us and whenever you join us for this service from St Giles Aintree, this online service on YouTube uh, for the Feast of Christ the King. We're going to be hearing a little bit more about the Feast of Christ the King from Reverend Sue who will be preaching for us later. But for now you're very welcome and we hope that this service provides a little bit of space in your week for reflection and uh, quiet time as well. And so after a moment of silence to draw ourselves together, settle our hearts and open our and open them to God this morning, I'm going to pray our collect, the church's special prayer for the feast of Christ the King. Eternal Father whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We begin our service uh, with the formal greeting in the traditional form of words, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin, and turn to Christ today, confessing our sins together in penitence and faith. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Hear God's words of forgiveness. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all that is good, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God's people together on this feast day, we sing or share in the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our epistle reading this morning is taken from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 15, to the end. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God, and the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit at the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those that are at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you, saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them. Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, And restrictions. Many, but by no means all, have accessed our worship online. And some people have watched the services who would not usually attend church. So we can be very thankful for that positive outcome. So today, still in lockdown and so out of our church building, we fix our gaze on this special day marking the end of Jesus' story that we have shared and journeyed with through this challenging year. Today is the climax, the complete and total summation of his kingship, and we are reminded in our Gospel reading of the things that this king values and what he expects, maybe demands, of those who follow him. It is good to think about these things, because Christmas, when it comes, wonderful as it is, can be very sentimental and cosy, and our faith is neither of these things. Our faith must be rugged and strong, because it is a demanding journey that we travel with Jesus, and we need strength and faithfulness to keep going and not fall away. Perhaps this year, more than any I can recall, needs us to be more deeply planted in Jesus than ever before, rooted very firmly to keep us steady in the turmoil and difficulties surrounding and impacting upon our lives. Christmas is lovely, and just like you, I hope and pray that we will be back in our beautiful church singing our carols and worshipping the newborn king. But more, even than that, I hope and pray that we get back into a pattern of shared worship that reminds us, assures us, comforts us that this is the king who grows to manhood and dies on a cross. There is much national talk effort and energy being applied so that we can all be back to normal for Christmas. And yet Easter and the loss of our worship caused far less concern in our world. 
Yes, we were at a different stage in the pandemic, but really, this is about Christmas, which has become for many a secular holiday. Folk are not challenged or uncomfortable with the focus on a non-demanding, harmless baby boy born in a stable. But there is very little connection with that child as a person who becomes a man and king, who dies on the cross and makes demands on those who would follow him. This is the Jesus who stood on its head the meaning of kingship, he who chose to celebrate with the wrong kind of people, offered peace and hope to the wrong people, warned the wrong people of God's coming judgment. He who did all these things in all these places that would cause him to be killed as a revolutionary. In a period of time, ever so brief, in that human body which we welcome on Christmas Day, all the splendour of heaven was revealed. The doors between heaven and earth were opened and God came near and his majesty was seen. In Jesus' body, both human and divine, holiness and earthliness were interwoven. The holiness we need to see and to follow is spelled out for us in today's Gospel reading. It is a call for us to follow the King who gave his life for others. We are called to live our lives loving and caring for others too. The pandemic has seen a wonderful amount of loving and caring, sacrifice and courage by those who know Jesus and those who don't. And again, this is something for us to be immensely thankful for and to pray for it to continue after this current challenge has passed. It is said that God brings good out of all things. Perhaps this is a perfect example of that. If someone wanted us to pen a portrait of this king we choose to follow, yes, we would very properly start with the baby in a manger born of a virgin mother and the delight and amazement of that. But without taking breath, we would continue to the man who allowed a Roman soldier to drive a nail through his wrist, who touched a leper and brought healing, who smiled with compassion and love and understanding at the woman at the well who defended the sinful woman, who fed the poor, who brought hope to the desperate and sight to the blind. He was the man who spoke with thunderous authority and yet loved with childlike humility. And those who saw him, truly saw him, were never the same again. Like Thomas, who cried out when he saw him, my Lord and my God, and Mary Magdalene's, I have seen the Lord. We have seen his glory, declared John. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked, rejoiced the two disciples on the Emmaus Road. But it is Peter who said it all, really, for Peter said, We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Thank you to Reverend Poppy and Reverend Sue for your gospel reading and for your sermon as well. We turn in our service now to prayer and the response that will appear on your screen to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. So let us pray. Blessed are you Lord our King and our God. For you have made us and we belong to you. You have revealed your love for us in the coming of Christ our Lord and in the sending of the Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Lord, today we ask your blessing upon all who seek to care for your people. We pray for all those who serve as bishops, priests and deacons, for all who preach the word, administer the sacraments, 
and show pastoral care. We ask that we all may share in your outreach and mission of love. We especially remember those who are reaching out to those who feel confused and those who feel lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we ask your blessing upon this world which is your creation. And we remember today all who are struggling against evil, war or poverty. We pray for all those who share in your redeeming work through their caring for others and seeking to bring them freedom. We pray, among others, for all relief agencies and all who reach out to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we ask your blessing upon our homes and our loved ones. And in a moment of quietness, we recall the names of those people to mind. We also remember today all those who live alone and for those who are homeless. Especially in this time of pandemic and lockdown, we pray for those who are lonely and who have been on their own for a long time. Lord, we pray for young people, those who are living on the streets of our towns and cities, and all those whose lives are diminished by circumstances that they could not avoid. In our cycle of prayer, we also pray for as we pray around our villages, our village of entry, we pray for each of our churches who are meeting online or in person today. And we pray for all those who live and work on Eremond Close, Spring Close and Sunlock Close. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we ask your blessing upon all those who are ill at home or in hospital. We remember also loved ones who are caring for them and those who are anxious and fearful. In a moment of quiet, we offer to God the names and the families of those we know who are experiencing these things. Lord, we pray for strength for those who feel they cannot cope on their own. We pray for health to be given and sight for them to be noticed. We ask your blessing upon all carers and those involved in medical care and the rescue services alongside all who work so that we can use those things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we ask your blessing on our friends and loved ones who have departed from us. May they share with your saints in glory. To you and your loving presence, we commit this world and ourselves, and ask that we may know you as the King of love, our Saviour and our friend. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Peace To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, and the peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Wherever we are, we offer one another a sign of peace or pick up the phone and offer it to another. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. 
Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. And now we give you thanks, because you anointed Jesus Christ, your only Son, as priest and king. Crowned with thorns, he offered his life upon the cross, that he might draw all people into that kingdom where he now reigns in glory. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise, and we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, given for you all. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Heavenly Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your Spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. So our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of our world, blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Our post-communion prayer this week. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruits of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Just a few notices uh, to say that today is the deadline for 
uh, the St Giles recipe book and to say that from next week we'll be starting our first stall um, at the back of church. If you come in for private prayer you may wish to browse. Uh, we ask that you, uh, as your mums and dads probably taught you, that you look and don't touch uh, and only touch the items that you want to buy. That would be great to keep everyone safe. Uh, but if you do want to get in touch, uh, there'll be a list on Facebook of what items the um, are on the stalls and you can get in touch with us to order those and we'll deliver them out to you and you just pay at the door. Uh, so from next week, um, it'll be knitted toys and crafts and also we are offering uh, boxes of five mixed cakes for £2 that can be ordered in advance, ready to be collected on the Sunday the 6th of December. You can order in church, there is a list out or you can get in touch uh, with Hazel to do that. And to say that there will be on Advent Sunday, uh, we will be have, hopefully having an outdoor service at four o'clock um, in the afternoon um, in the car park, which you're very welcome to come and attend. Socially distanced, of course. And a big thank you to everyone who have uh, brought to church there contributions for the Christmas hampers and the deadline for that is next Sunday um, to, and thank you for everyone again who's already contributed. Next week we are open on Wednesday uh, from 10 till 11 for private prayer and as I say Advent Sunday, um, Advent Sunday private prayer will be 8am till 9.30am and 10.30 uh, till 12 noon as this week so I we'll hope to see you then or I hope you enjoy this video online. Now our final blessing the Lord be with you and also with you. May Christ our exalted King pour upon you his abundant gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory and may the blessing of God Almighty who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit rest upon you upon those you love and upon all those who you pray for today and always. Amen. Let us all go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.